Well, good evening, everyone. We're certainly glad each of a, each of you are online with us. Glad to have the opportunity to speak to you once more. This evening, I'd like for us to consider a lesson under the heading of Romans 15, 4. Our text will be Deuteronomy chapter 1. If you'd like to turn to that passage, and we'll read from that in a few moments. But I'd like for us to consider Israel of old. I'd like for us to look at a presumption that they made, some of the consequences for that behavior, as well as God's attitude for those who were presumptuous. Again, our text will be in Deuteronomy chapter 1. Uh, we'll later on be reading from verses 34 through 46, although not all at once. As we consider some of the events leading up to these specific verses, we see in verses 22 through 33, that Moses is retelling some of their history. He brings up the exodus from Egypt through the wilderness wandering. He even goes through when they sought to spy out the land. They chose spies to send to the promised land. And then we note the report that these spies brought back. Ten of them were bad news two brought back good news. Actually, we see the faithfulness coming out of these two spies, Joshua and Caleb. But because of the 10 spies who brought back a, a bad report, we see that the entire congregation of Israel was discouraged. And because of that, they failed to take the land. This resulted in all but Caleb and Joshua being excluded from the promised land. In fact, the congregation of Israel would later wander throughout the wilderness for a much longer period of time. Now, this will bring us to our text. Deuteronomy chapter 1, beginning in verse 34. It says, And the Lord heard the voice of your words. Again, this is Moses retelling. And was wroth and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swear unto your, to give to you unto your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which he said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither. And unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. We see the prescription here of God and the rebellion of Israel. Because of the ill report of those 10 spies and their refusal to take the land of e or the promised land, we must note that God's will did not change, only how it was to be accomplished. And because of their rebellion, God promised that these people's children would instead take the land. Now, in the next few verses, specifically verse 41, I'd like for us to note that Israel had a change of heart. We say we see in the face of God's punishment, they were willing and in fact did admit to their sin. So in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 41, it reads, Then ye answered and said unto me, the people answering unto Moses, we have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And when ye had girded on every man his weapons of war, you were ready to go up into the hill. You see, they acknowledged their disobedience to God. This resulted in a hasty decision being made and now their willingness to take the land. They presumed that it was their responsibility now to take the promised land. And because of this, they attempted to do what God no longer wanted them to do. 
And because of this, next we note the consequences of their presumption. Though they acknowledge their sin, consequences remain. Prior to disobedience, or their, their prior disobedience led to their exclusion. As we noted earlier in verse 39, because they chose to rebel against God, they were no longer eligible to overtake the promised land. Because of this, it would be their children that would take the land and eventually populate it. God promised to give the land to their children. Their change of heart did not change God's will. And later on, because they acted upon this, it still would not please God. And that's the whole idea behind the presumption is we're substituting God's command, God's will for, and I think so. I think God would be pleased if I do thus and so, rather than having a thus saith the Lord. Which brings us toward or to God's attitude towards such behavior. Because they acted presumptuously, God was no longer among them. He was no longer approving of their actions. He would no longer fight for them. We see then in Deuteronomy chapter, still in ver, uh, chapter one, but now in verse 42, it says, And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I spake unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites, which dwelt in that mountain, came out against you, and chased you as bees do, and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Hormah. And ye returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. So ye abode in Kadesh many days, according unto the days that ye abode there. Well, as we've pointed out, because they substituted their will for God's will, they acted presumptuously, God would not fight their battles with them. He was no longer among them, as the writer says. Israel thought they were obeying God, but because of their rebellion, they were no longer obeying God. Their presumption brought about their own destruction. And because of this, they were punished to continue wandering in the wilderness until everyone uh, of that generation was wiped out. So we've considered tonight then the idea of presumption with respect to the children of Israel. This congregation should serve as a warning to us as Christians for us to not act presumptuously. Instead, May we ever strive to follow him exactly how he has outlined, how he has prescribed in his will. We must always have a thus saith the Lord rather than a thus saith self, which puts more emphasis on Colossians 3, chapter, chapter, or chapter 3, verse 17. Knowing God's word avails us his will for us to follow, and obeying that will spares us from eternal destruction. We, we will still have to endure the different consequences brought about by sin on behalf of others, but the eternal consequences will be spared from. We, too, will be able to inhabit the promised land. So may it never be said that the Christian would act presumptuously, but rather follow after God's will. Thank you for your attention.